pride in the young people that we have in our program. It's kind of like Gene said, you want to have quality young men in your program. You know, that's been our intent for the last 28 years or so, and, uh, and we do have that quality. The uh, a number of things that uh, I'm, I'm so proud of, I think uh, first and foremost would be their academic uh, efforts. You know, uh, collectively, and this is for 130 young guys and the totality of their career here at Kansas State University. They have uh, an overall GPA at 2.93, which, you know, is uh, right at the B level, which is pretty good for a football team when you consider the amount of time and effort that they have to put in to, you know, with football, et cetera, which uh, doesn't allow them the opportunity to invest as much academically as uh, the normal college student would. Uh, our APR rating, which is an academic rating uh, provided by the NC2A that uh, defines uh, the academic success of any program, is in the last five years collectively has been the best in the Big 12 Conference. Uh, our graduation rate is well above 80%, and that goes back through, again, 20, whatever it is, 28 years. Uh, I'm awful proud of that. You know, we have, a, we have a program in place to try to bring any young person that leaves our program back to Kansas State to get his degree. Uh, it, it's my intent and my goal that we end up graduating 100% of the players in our program. Each year in this program that we have, which uh, uh, does bring back a number of young guys, uh, we graduated every semester somewhere between one and four players who left without their degree are now coming back. Uh, I call and our academic people call each of those young people uh, twice a year, once each semester, every single year, and there, there, there's one young man he is now two units away from finishing his degree from my hometown, St. Joseph, Missouri. He is the only non-graduate in the very first class that we hit, and he just said, I get tired of you calling me. He's <laughs> <laughs> going to get his degree, and I'm off the line. You know, the community service work that our players do, and I, you know, I think all of you recognize the value of learning how to give back. And that is significant in everyone's life, and certainly with the young people that we have, and they are heavily invested in community service. We have five retirement centers in Manhattan, Kansas, and our players go into the uh, community uh, retirement centers. Uh, we present a program and then they sit down and visit one-on-one -on -one with all of the members that are there, some of them in their 90s, some of them, you know, every once in a while we run into one that's, uh, you know, 100 plus years of age. Those people enjoy it. Our players, you know, at the very first, you could ask the young people that are here, you know, the very first time that I asked them to go, they were a little hesitant. After they've gone the first time, they want to go back again. You know, it is such a joy for them as well. And I get calls from the retirement center uh, constantly throughout the year that says, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? It's the number one thing that they enjoy, and, and it's really significant. They get a great deal out of it, but at the end of the day, I think our players get even, even more. You know, we do all the youth programs. We've got a variety of different programs with young people uh, in, our, uh, in our community that our players get invested in, and that's so beneficial to the young people, but once again, it's so beneficial to the young people in our program. You know, one of the things that uh, I would uh, uh, share with you, well, also from a football standpoint, you know, we had uh, <clears throat> a couple of our young guys were drafted this year. That's the 24th consecutive year of having someone drafted from Kansas State football program and that's the number one, uh, that's the only team in the conference that has gone 24 years throughout the Big 8 and the Big 12 uh, having uh, uh, someone drafted in the program. I'm grateful, obviously, to the NFL, but you know, even a greater statistic in my eyes, what I appreciate so much is the fact in the NFL, there are, we don't have as many as uh, a number, you know, we don't have the number of people in the NFL that maybe in Oklahoma does or Nebraska does, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
you go through the country and you find a number of programs that have more players in the NFL. But there is no school in the NFL that has a greater longevity rate in the NFL than Kansas State University, meaning that the average, the average uh, period of time in the NFL uh, arguably is somewhere between, for any player, is somewhere between a year and a half and two and a half years. Our players that went to the NFL average seven and a half years in the NFL, and I'm awful proud of that, and, and they all come back and say the same thing. You know, we learned how to do it, meaning not the football stuff, we learned how to practice at Canton State University, and they learned the intrinsic values that are so significant to just having the persistence to stay in uh, the, the programs where they can be across the United States. So. Uh, another thing that uh, I would share with you, uh, several things, the, uh, uh, and I, I share these with you, I have before, uh, because A, they're important to me, but I think they're things that are important to any community within our great state of Kansas. Uh, a number of ventures I've gotten. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're just trying to get rid of it. <laughs> Never. Well, anyway. <laughs> okay, but well, we'll, we'll work through it. Uh, but there are you know, a number of uh, uh, entities that you know, really have been significant. One of them I mentioned to you is an organization called Kansas Mentors. Kansas Mentors was established uh, when Kathleen Savick was... Thank you. Uh, well, that's a good man. Uh, Kathleen Spigas was the governor at the time, and she and I started uh, Kansas Mentors, and it's been in existence ever since. And, and I say it because of two reasons. One, Kansas Mentors reaches out to every community in the state. You have mentoring organizations here in Scott City, and Kansas Mentors reaches out to them. And it's, a, it's really a, a wonderful, it's a significant, organization to try to help people who want to genuinely care about young people and want to help mentor. And I've said this so many times to you, if you never mentored a young person in your life and you try it, you will find it's the greatest experience and the most rewarding experience that you have ever had. And I would encourage you to look into any of the programs you have in the community you know, if you're uncertain where they are or who they are, you can go online, just look up kansasmentors.gov and you'll, you'll find uh, a lot of information about it. Uh, one of the other things, on our campus, uh, and obviously, uh, you know, it comes into play for me right now, but uh, I've been, you know, a part of it, and I've been on the board of every one of these organizations, and I'm on the board of uh, the Johnson Cancer Research Center, which is on our campus at Kansas State University. And they do an amazing job. And they try to reach out into our state as well. You know, it's a great group of people and great organization. Terry Johnson, who died of cancer, uh, started that and was president of it for quite some, quite some time. Uh, the, uh, uh, one of the other which is, is significant for every community again uh, in terms of civic leadership. And it, uh, the organization group again, uh, uh, Kathleen, when she was in office, uh, Ed Seaton, uh, excuse me, not Ed Seaton, uh, Ed O'Malley, who was the uh, uh, senator here in the state of Kansas. Uh, she appointed him. Uh, we organized uh, this group called Kansas Leadership Center. Uh, he's opened the structure and uh, building in uh, Wichita. It's been there for, I want to say, maybe 10 years. Uh, he's the president of it. And they reach out to every community in our state to try to help uh, enhance the civic leadership within that community. And, you know, if you haven't, you know, you can look online once again, see the things that they do, and it's really pretty special when they come into your community and try to help, and try just help to, as I said, enhance the civic leadership, which is good for any, <clears throat> any community. Uh, one of the others is the Kansas Sports Hall of Fame. And, you know, that, 
that impacts everybody that's interested in sports within our state. And the uh, Kansas Sports Hall of Fame is housed uh, in uh, Wichita. Uh, they reach out into every community. They will bring people into your community uh, free of charge and present programs to try to uh, help you embrace uh, athletics, whether it happens to be at the college level or at the high school level. And, that's, and it's really a, a great, great program. There are several others, but I don't want to say you know, any more. I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, ask some of those questions. And if you have some, if you do, I'll do the best I can to, to answer them. So if you have a chance to go and talk some football, we'll do it right now. Yes, yes sir. Coach, you're like 64, 65 years old, and you've still got four or five years to go. And you've coached three great lockup receivers in your career. And I've heard there's uh, some twins lockets that are like 11, 12 years old. So how's it going to be in four or five years or six that you're coaching two great receivers? <laughs> Whatever that is, that's the right answer. Uh, the question was uh, with all the lockups that we did uh, in our program and the fact that uh, there were to uh, I'm, I'm going to miss all of them. I uh, I've been accused of a lot of things, but learning how to microphone is not one of them. Anything else? We want to get to the gaming tables. Yes, sir. Talk about your quarterbacks, coach. Pardon? Talk to us about your quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. Uh, well, you know, the Jess, uh, you know, was injured again that second year in a row that he's been injured. So, you know, how his.